Good morning. This is Brenda Meller with Meller Marketing joining back again today for another edition of Social Media Pie, where I bring on inspiring people to inform and educate you. And very excited to join as my special guest today, Mark Bielan. Mark, how are you doing today? Doing well, Brenda. How are you? Good. Really good. Nice to see you again in video. It's been a little while since we've seen each other in person, right. but um, hopefully we'll see each other in person in the next few months here when things kind of get back to normal, right? <laughs> I agree. I agree. Can't wait. Yeah. Well, good. So a little um, before we get started in the conversation here today, guys, and I'm just going to remind you, we're here to talk about hiring strategies in today's market. And Mark will talk a little bit about um, the work they're doing at UHY and, and some of his philosophies kind of on that subject. But before we get into the conversation, what I wanted to do is just take a moment to um, to share a little bit of the backstory of how I met Mark. And um, it starts actually with a story that starts with the Detroit Economic Club. I was doing a LinkedIn presentation within that group. And one of Mark's team members, Stephanie Rosenbaum, was, it was in the room that day. And Stephanie reached out to me, it was probably a month or so after that, and, and mentioned that she was running a C-level job seeker group and wanted me to come and present LinkedIn strategies for that group. And I, I said yes, and I think I threw it on my calendar and I kind of forgot about it. And then it was like the night before and I, I don't think I'd heard anything from Stephanie. And I reached out and I said, hey, I haven't really promoted this. I don't know if you're you're doing any push out, but I said, maybe we should cancel and reschedule it. And she's like, no, I've actually got you know 10 or 15 people that are coming. And um, I'm like, okay, I'll go. So I I, I went the next morning and I was like, uh, you know, I, I went and did the presentation. It was a great group of people and I always help, enjoy helping job seekers. Um, and we went around the room and everybody introduced themselves. And, you know, I just kind of had them tell me their name, um, either their targeted job title or kind of the industry they wanted to work in and what they were looking to learn. And Mark was in the room and I didn't know who he was. And and it was just, it was a bunch of C-level job seekers is, is kind of my assumption. And I, I did the presentation. It was a great group. I walked out of the room and Mark pulled me on the hall afterwards. And he's like, hey, um, you know, I, I lead up a practice here at UHY and um, these were some great techniques. You know, is this something you think you can come back and help my team? And I ended up, you know, Mark ended up becoming a client of mine and I've been working with his team on, on LinkedIn strategies um, for the past few years. And I just, I share this story with you because you never know when a connection may lead to another connection that leads to you know business opportunities and for me i kind of think about that night before when i can't i was almost thinking about canceling on stephanie and i'm glad i didn't and i'm glad i came out not just to help the job seekers but also because i had the the chance to to meet mark so um with that mark you know for those that are watching um live right now i want to remind you guys i'm going to put a little ticker underneath here um let us know in comments below if you're online watching us because we can't see the people here until you leave a comment. So this will let Mark know if um, if you work with Mark or if you work with UHY, he'll let him know that you're watching. And then later on, if you have some questions, you can drop the questions in there for us as well. So now what I'd like to do, Mark, is I'll turn the, the floor over to you. And if you could take a moment to describe you know, who you are and a little bit about the work that you do at UHY Resource Solutions Group. Sure. Yeah. First, I knew that story, but I did not know that you were contemplating, you know, bailing on us. <laughs> that, that, that is, that, but it was one of those, things. like, you know, sometimes you get an appointment on your calendar mm -hmm. and then, you know, I, I just feel like my follow through wasn't very good and checking the details. And as I saw, and it was like the night before and I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. And <laughs> it was almost like I felt like it was an afterthought. And I'm like, well, I didn't do a good enough job promoting it. We should probably reschedule. And Stephanie's like, no, you got to come. But right. yeah, that's the backstory. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and, and our association is going on a couple of years now. And it's, yeah. it's been very productive for our team. And <clears throat> we appreciate the insight and expertise you bring. Absolutely. So I'm a, I'm a partner with, with UHY. Um, UHY is a public accounting firm. We've got, I don't know, 300 or 50, 400 people here in southeastern Michigan. Uh, and four or five, I guess five locations now. We're, we're in uh, Sterling Heights, Farmington Hills, mm -hmm. downtown Detroit, Ann Arbor. And then we recently acquired a firm in Port Huron. Yeah, oh, okay. So I, I lead a group that we call Resource Solutions. And our group does three things. Uh, um, one thing we're known for is, is permanent placement work. So we'll we'll do a large number of permanent placement assignments for professionals. Primarily, you know, we're in an accounting firm, so mm -hmm. most of the positions we work on are, are accounting related, and they'll be anywhere on the professional organization chart. So they can be accountants, analysts, auditors, 
managers, controllers, and CFOs. About a third of the searches we do are, are for CFOs. <clears throat> our client base is incredibly diverse. About half of our clients are middle market companies, what would be typically defined as middle market companies, mm -hmm. with revenue between maybe $5 million and $100 million on, on average. <clears throat> And those companies are the fabric of Detroit. You know, they're the companies you see all over town, a lot of automotive suppliers, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of family owned companies. But then we'll also have clients that are in a variety of services, service industries as well. <clears throat> so that's that's one half of our client base. The other half of the clients would, would tend to be large, typically public companies who, whose names you would, you would recognize. So. Mm -hmm. Very different kind of clients, uh, very diverse, very different hiring practices, very different ways of thinking about bringing somebody on board. So that's one of the things we do, permanent placement. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do is what's called in, in the accounting world, loan staff work. Um, so we'll provide interim executives, interim professionals to our clients to meet whatever the need they may have. And, and lots of different things drive the need for interim resources. Uh, you could have someone depart unexpectedly. Uh, you could have a project that occurs where you, you just don't have the resources to get it done and it has to get done. Uh, mm -hmm. The list goes on and on and on. So we'll provide interim CFOs, interim controllers, accounting professionals and teams to deal with project work, th that sort of thing. Then the third thing we do, and this is our, our most uh, recent offering. We, we started this about a year ago. Uh, we, we have a risk advisory services management consulting practice that focuses on, on internal audit, IT audits, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley compliance, uh, and, and the like. And that is a traditional consulting practice uh, with really skilled uh, uh, leaders and subject matter experts in, in that field. So th those are the three things that, that we do. I, I started the practice, and I, I can't believe it now. It's been almost eight and a half years ago. Wow, congratulations. Uh, and, and by UHY standards, that's a pretty new practice. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the firm's been around for quite a while. and so. We're, we're, we still consider ourselves a, a relatively new, new, new uh, entree uh, mm -hmm. to the market under the UHY banner. That's great. And it's, it sounds like it's a really nice extension of kind of the brand and, and meeting a different need in the market that you, you identified. So congratulations to you and to your no. team on your success. No, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so Mark, we were, you know, and Mark's been such a great student. I have to say a LinkedIn student, if you will, I've been training him on different techniques and, um, pressing his comfort level a little bit, wouldn't you say too, Mark? Like sometimes I'll say, I remember back in the day, it was like, how about blogging on LinkedIn? What do you think about that? And, and Mark's like, well, I'm like, well, you know, we have some really great conversations about, you know, the work that you guys are doing and how you're helping organizations and, you know, how you are finding really talented um, talent out in the market and matching them to these positions. And um, I'm going to pop a couple of the blogs in the comments here in a minute that Mark has written. But the one most recently was hiring strategies in today's market. And, and, and for those that are watching, you might go, well, hold on, Brenda. In today's market, isn't hiring like stopped or frozen? I mean, isn't it kind of gone away? Hasn't it gone away completely? And, you know, no, I mean, companies are still hiring. And, you know, the blog that Mark wrote about was kind of talking about, you know, how do you approach this in today's market? And um, not just now, but kind of in the future. So, so Mark, if, if you could kind of take us through, you know, some of your, your strategies for companies as they're thinking about hiring in, in the market and, and things they need to be aware of and processes they need to be thinking through. So what, what prompted writing that was um, some client interactions that we thought were, were really interesting and, and frankly, unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, so we all know the context, right? We're, we're in an, an environment that is uh, unprecedented. Uh, I just saw the ADP report came out this morning. Uh, the, the number of jobless is just enormous. Yeah. Uh, the, the Department of Labor uh, reports coming out on Friday this week. So mm -hmm. we're going to see unemployment numbers we've, we've never seen before. So this is a very unusual time. And clients are doing, companies are doing what you'd expect them to do. So discretionary spending is frozen. Uh, hiring freezes are in place. Uh, you know, compensation is being reduced. Frankly, compensation is being reduced at, at levels that I've never heard of. You know, I'm a lot older than you are, Brenda. So no, I, no, no. <laughs> so I, I, I remember a lot of this stuff. You know, I, I've lived through the, you know, the, the post Y2K experience, the post 9-11 experience, the 2008-2009 experience. And, 
Mm -hmm. And this is something quite different. And, and companies are reacting quickly and they're react, reacting severely. And, and the speed is really something that, that uh, kind of boggles the mind. Yeah. So, so companies are doing all kinds of things to, to preserve cash because in this environment, cash is king. And they're going to do everything they can to, to uh, accumulate as much cash to cushion any future problems that, that, that they can. All of that's sensible and, and totally appropriate. But there's also an opportunity that, that this presents. Uh, and, and what we thought clients should do and what we've seen some clients do is really start to think strategically about where their needs are. So what what positions are really critical? I mean, you can You can survive for a while without a senior financial executive on your team. You can do that. Uh, a middle market company can do that. But at some point, um, push is going to come to shove and they are going to want to have that talent in their organization. And a good financial executive can generate a substantial return on investment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not that difficult. Um, and so companies are going to wrestle with that. And, right. and, and when should we do it? When should we think about it? You know, it can go on for a little bit, but but when do I just need to get on with it and say, you know, we're in an unusual time period. This too shall pass. Right. And this company is going to be here a while and I want to take care of this problem. Mm -hmm. So th the first thing we suggested is really think strategically about what, what your needs are and prioritize those. Some are much more important than others. Uh, so that was sort of the first element of this. And we saw some companies do this. Uh, even during during the, uh, the the early parts of the shutdown period, and say, you know, I know we're in shutdown, but I gotta get this handled. I've gotta I've gotta do this. So that that would be you know, kind of point one as as we think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and then the, the you know the second point that that um, that we suggested to companies is is don't shut down the talent acquisition process completely. I mean, right. don't just don't just stop. I mean, you can. You can continue to have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't do them over coffee, like I, you know. Virtual like like coffee, though, right? We we can grab our our coffee <laughs> online, right, Mark? <laughs> there you go. You can do that, uh, but but you you can continue to talk to people, and and you know, to your earlier point, um, serendipity is a strange thing, and when you have conversations with people, um, unexpected good things can happen. And so we, we encourage people to, you know, continue to be active in the marketplace, continue to have, continue to have conversations uh, because you just don't know where it's, where it's going to go. I think that the temptation for a lot of companies is just to say, you know, we're, we're done. <laughs> we're, right. we're not, we're not doing anything. You know, the revenue has disappeared. Uh, you know, we get, we got other things we've got to do. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're just going to, we're just going to put a stop to this. Um, we, we would suggest, uh, fighting that 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 temptation, mm -hmm. and and continuing to have conversations uh, with with candidates and 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 folks in the marketplace. Yeah, because I would and, imagine, and Mark, it's probably it's not a immediate, especially at a high level. If you're looking for a high level executive to join your team, it's not it's not an immediate process. You have to you know put together a job posting, put the posting out there, you know, put it into the market, start to screen in candidates, get conversation. I mean, it's not a, a quick process necessarily so kind of having that up and running and going you can tap into it quickly i would imagine well there, there you go so the if you do stop it completely mm -hmm. and you stop it for any period of time restarting it can be a little painful i mean yeah. it, it, it can cost you time and it can cost you money the other thing and, and and we've seen this with with inbound requests i mean all of a sudden the labor market has flipped um, so yeah, in, in, yeah, in, that's in, true. Because it was like just two months ago, wasn't it? Like it was. Uh, what do they say? It was a job seekers market three months ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the supp supply demand um, curves sort of flipped, and yeah. uh, you know, you, you go from a from an environment where we had I don't know three and a half percent unemployment in the United States, unemployment mm -hmm. for people with college degrees over the age of twenty five was running. Yeah. South of three percent, um, you know. My my team would 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 say, would say that the unemployment level for the people we were looking for was was probably in the one percent range. Yeah. I mean, there just was not that much unemployment mm -hmm. out there, which which creates you know real difficulties. You you've got a very competitive situation right. when you're looking to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, that has flipped, and, yeah. and we're, we are getting 
um, inbound uh, requests for, from from candidates who who are really talented, capable people right. who, mm -hmm. through no fault of their own, frankly, are on the market. Um, some with with stunning speed. I mean, it's just yeah, it shocks me with how quickly some of these decisions were made. <clears throat> so you do have the ability to to potentially have conversations with with talent that you know, literally 60 days ago, you, you would not have been able Goodness. to do. And it's kind of like in this market too. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a marketer, Mark. I think you know that I'm not a, like a finance person or investor or anything, but it's kind of like when the market is low is the time that you want to buy because you can get, you know, your stocks at a, at a deep discount. And similarly for employers, I mean, it's almost like the time to hire is, is really now, or at least to, to do your screening because you have, um, there's access to such amazing talent in the market right now that, um, you know, once thing and we know p things will pick back up. I mean, we, we came from a strong economy. We know we don't know how long this is going to last, but we know things are eventually going to pick up. And the companies that are investing now right in their talent and their recruiting process are going to be the ones that recover faster and that have, I would think, longer term success. Yeah, and we we support that hypothesis. So what we, we tell clients is that you know, be ready. Yeah. Be ready. Mm -hmm. Don't be reckless. You know, there's a, there's a difference between being reckless yeah. and, and, and being ready to go because you, you could find some really capable, talented people, mm -hmm. frankly, at a discount yeah. uh, to the market, certainly where the market was 60 days ago. Uh, and, and, and there may be an opportunity to find some folks that you just could not get um, mm -hmm. previously. And, and I mean, to your point, we entered this with a really strong economy. You know, one would think, it's hard to say how quickly, but one would think we'll, we'll, we will rebound to some level approaching that. Uh, so, you know, who knows? This opportunity may pass. Uh, so when when you get folks that are, that are really capable, can fill your need, meet your mm -hmm. culture, at a really attractive price point, you know, we encourage people not to be shy um, yeah. and, and, and to be ready when, when that opportunity comes. That's great. And Mark, do you, I mean, what you're describing in terms of the work that you do, you do as I heard you, you talking about hiring managers, and then I also heard you talking about candidates. So are you, do you, do you work with both? I mean, if there's someone watching today, who's on either side of that fence, um, you know, if they're looking to hire or, you know, inclined to, to reach out to you, it sounds like you, you do that already, but what about the candidate side? What's your process for candidates that are looking to connect with UHY or kind of look at the opportunities that you guys have available? Yeah. So you can't do one without the other. I mean, yeah. they, they, they are they are very uh, very much together. Uh, you, you can, you know, as as, uh, as my business developers will tell me frequently, you know, we, we, we can get orders, but uh, it doesn't matter if we can get if we can't get candidates. So we mm -hmm. we are frequently talking to people in the marketplace. I, I spend about twenty percent of my time talking with with candidates who are in the market, often for no specific openings, uh, just so we know about them. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and we have offered, you know, particularly in this time period, we are happy to talk to uh, to professionals. You know, we're not not that we're the smartest people in the world, but we'll <laughs> certainly provide a perspective on what's going on in the marketplace. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, we've we've learned thanks to your counsel about the importance of LinkedIn mm -hmm. and, and how that plays in the recruiting process. So we. We offer some of that wisdom uh, to, to candidates as, yeah. as best we can. We, we can't replace Brenda Miller, but we, we offer a few, <laughs> you know, we offer a, a few you know tidbits. It, it's you know it's re remarkably new ground for people. I mean, some people have been with the same employer for long periods of time, and they're all of a sudden they're thrust into this. Yeah, and how they should proceed is a really difficult thing. So we're we're happy to have those conversations, uh, and we're happy to provide input and feedback. Uh, it's important to remember, though, that we work for our clients. Right. Um, so, so it's you know we we that's who we work for, and, and we're looking for for opportunities to if for, for sort of the intersection of uh, of client need and candidate availability. So okay. that's 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 what that's what we try to do. So, okay. But, and I'm but, popping up on your, screen right here, Mark. Um, sorry to jump in. Popping up on yeah. screen. I, I just pulled up your your LinkedIn page okay. here. And this is, I think this is an example for those that are watching. Um, I mean, they, you know, you and your team are posting, you know, the jobs here. And I mean, this is, this is the current position, right? This was five days ago. So yes, this right. is one example. And for anybody who's watching, if you're interested in this position, you know, definitely um, reach out to Lisa, um, let her know, or even better, you know, when you go to their page, 
click this little share icon and share it on your LinkedIn because you never know when um, you might be able to help somebody in the market um, to find a position. And I mean, this sounds like an amazing position. Birmingham, Michigan, three years of accounting, um, preferably in real estate and blending environment. It's a, it's a perfect example. And I, I know you guys are doing a really great job of continually posting and sharing um, opportunities like that. Yeah, one thing that's interesting about about the, the positions we've had, we, we definitely, like like everyone, we saw a slowdown sort of mid-March um, into, you know, certainly through April. Mm -hmm. But but positions that have that were put on hold have suddenly come back onto the market. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, companies are starting to move. Um, you know, there's there's no doubt about it. And and so that that change is is starting to happen, and and uh, we expect to see more of it as uh, as you know things start to open up um, mm -hmm. in, in our marketplace. That's right. So I, one of the things you talked about in the blog too, Mark, was um, technology and how employers are now starting to use technology as part of the the hiring process. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, you know, this this again is is something that I. Uh, I'm a dinosaur, so I struggle with this. But I, you know, I, I can remember talking to my team about it, and I really could not envision myself making a hiring decision without meeting someone face to face. I mean, right. I think they need to look me in the eye, and I need to look them in the eye, and I need mm -hmm. to get a sense of who they are as a person. And and you know, same thing from their perspective. So so doing that, you know, you, phone screens are common, uh, mm -hmm. but they're they're just okay. Um, yeah. So. It was really struggling with well, how are we going to, how is the hiring process even going to happen if we can't have face to face conversations? And who's going to want to make a hiring decision if they can't be in the same room uh, with somebody and have an extended conversation? Mm -hmm. And just as I was having this conversation, we we literally had two searches closed where where interviews were conducted much like you and I are having this conversation today. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the client mm -hmm. was comfortable with the, the screening process that was done, the, the, the initial phone conversations, the reference check-in, and then went through an extended interview through a technology very much like this one. Through video, right? Through video. Yeah. Through video. And, and, uh, and, and they came to a, a, a decision in, in both cases. And I never would have predicted that. I mean, I just, and, and, and again, I'm from a different generation, but <clears throat> it's, it's remarkable how that was embraced and how effective that was. Mm -hmm. And candidly, I'm not gonna say 100% of these um, decisions are going, going to be made this way, but I think a significant percentage will be in, um, it's just candidates are going to be less comfortable with face-to-face -face conversations for a bit. Until... For a little bit. Yeah. It's a good point. Right. Cause you right. might say, Hey, come in for an interview. And, and I even remember when, when all of this, you know, the pandemic first started happening and the schools were closing and you and Lisa and I were supposed to meet in person. And it was, I think it was Friday the 13th. If it wasn't that date, it was like the following Monday, the 15th. And at that point, I kept the kids home from school. You know, the last day I, I let them go out was the 12th. And I was like, I don't even feel like going out in public. And it's not that there was any fear I had of, of anything going on in your office. It was just like I was kind of getting um, very reluctant to go out. So I think once things start to open back up, we're going to be on the other side of that. And I, I kind of think about the bell curve, you know, coming out of the other side, we're not going to be comfortable right away to just be out there. And even, you know, I mean, what about the handshake, Mark? Will that happen? You know, or is the handshake yeah. gone? And could you have ever imagined that we'd be having a conversation about a handshake not happening anymore? Yeah, I, you know, I think handshakes are on pause for a little bit. Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's just, it's it's a very strange time. So, yeah. I I think this is a way to uh, to to do these interviews, to do these evaluations, and and I think companies are going to get much more comfortable. You know, the more they do, the more comfortable they'll get. Yeah, there you go. Uh, candidates the same way, mm -hmm. uh, and and even I. I saw it as part of the process, but yeah. I didn't. I thought a face-to-face -face meeting would be required to kind of close the deal. <clears throat> I think more and more companies, more and more candidates, <clears throat> excuse me, will get comfortable doing it, doing the whole process um, in this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, frankly, they they really don't have a choice. The yeah, there's. I mean, there's no. I mean, you you probably <laughs> been thrusted into this as well, and. Um, you know, you have to meet with your team. So, you know, part of that, it happens by phone. And then part of it, I mean, you, you kind of said earlier, seeing eyeball to eyeball, even though, even though it's through a video screen that I'm seeing, you know, your eyeball, 
it's still it's we're making a human connection by being able to right. see people. So it's it's I remember going from, um, you know, when people, you know, back in the day, pre COVID, you know, last year, the year before, would be like, hey, let's do a Skype. And I'm like, why? I don't want to be on video with you. Right. <laughs> Like I'm fine with being on camera, but it, it always felt weird to me to look look at somebody on screen um, and not be in person with them. But now I've quickly gone from I got over that, you know. And then it, I do so many, you know, video calls and chats and zooms and whatnot nowadays. It's like, um, and you learn things, you know. And, and I'm sure both of your candidates or employers are going through this process. Like for me, my video um, is capturing up here. I'm pointing to it with my finger, but my screen is down here. So right now I'm looking at you in your eyes, but you can see I'm not making that same emotional kind of professional connection with you as when I look in the camera. Right. So it's like we have to learn those techniques. And I guess in some ways it makes it a little bit more comfortable because I'm not staring at you and at me, you know, at myself. Right. Um, but it's, it's, it is a bit of a hurdle, I think, for both candidates and for employers, but yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I think people are just going to get more and more comfortable with this. Uh, yeah. There's been technology in, in the recruiting process for a long time. Uh, it's, it's just that final stage, getting over the goal line. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, almost, again, I couldn't even imagine not doing that without a face-to-face -face conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I got to believe it's going to become more and more prevalent. And, and we saw two examples of that very quickly and, and very successfully. So... So that, that's what I was referring to when I said, you know, be ready to embrace the technology, get comfortable with it, because mm -hmm. it's, it's here to stay, uh, at least for the near term, in, in how this will work. And, you know, just this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's, it's interesting to think about all the things that we are doing now as professionals, how many of those things will, we will continue to do, even if we have the ability to kind of go back to the way things used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, this may be one of those innovations where we say, you know, this is working pretty darn well. Yeah. We, could, yeah, we could keep doing this. It's, it's pretty efficient. That's a really good point. My, my friend Jan Griffiths, she posted yesterday, and it was a, it was a movie meme and it was a, a movie and it was like, take it or toss it. And she, she kind of said, what are you going to take from these days of, you know, kind of living in, you know, living at home or working from home and being um, completely working from home. And what are you going to toss, you know, from your former life? And it was really interesting to see like what people are, are you know, you, you appreciate time management in a different way. You appreciate your family, you know, you appreciate flexibility and, um, you know, the sacrifices you've had to make and, you know, that you're now having to make if you're, you know, like, like us, we've got two school age children in the home. So, um, Luckily, they're old enough where I can say, I've got to be on a phone call. I'm going to close my door. Only interrupt me if somebody needs to go to the hospital or the house is on fire. But, you know, the, the folks with the little ones, I mean, I, I was on a call the other day and it reminded me that guy, you know, years ago was like CNN, the, the toddler walks in the room behind him and it was like a big to do thing. And now it's like, oh, it's OK. You know, we're all working from home um, because we can't send our kids to daycare. We can't send them to grandma's house. You know, we all got to make some concessions. So, right, um, right. But I really like your thought here of embracing technology in the hiring process. And, you know, we've been we've been forced into it. But, right. you know, now that we're here, it's not too bad. Right. The water's OK over here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's working. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, why don't we at this moment, Mark, um, I'm actually going to pull up my phone because I'm going to look at the comments yeah. that are coming up on screen here. And um, we're we're broadcasting this live right now on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And I just want to, you know, uh, take a moment to, if you guys have any questions you would like to ask Mark, you can see the little ticker kind of running as it's going along the screen. If you have questions for Mark, enter them in the comments below. Um, this does two things. One is it, it helps to alert us of who's watching. We can see numbers, but we can't see the faces unless you... Um, like this video or leave a comment below. And if you have a specific question for Mark about um, kind of the hiring process, you know, in, in the, the phase of, of the business world that we're in right now, either from the perspective of a hiring manager, somebody who's looking to fill positions or from the perspective of candidates, um, you know, drop those in the comments below and we'll take those. And Mark, I, I poked onto you, actually, I think I tried to pull it up in another screen here on LinkedIn. I pulled up the screen a little bit earlier and I, and I saw several of your team members um, joining and supporting you today. So I, I give a couple give a couple shout outs to, to those folks and then I'll say hi to the other folks that are joining us here as well. Okay. So I'm going right. to start kind of from the bottom. We've actually got um, a pretty number. Uh, we've got, I think, we've got 23 viewers, 25 comments so far, and folks are coming in and out. Um, and you know that number, those numbers will increase as the day goes on. So we've got Andy Malakak. Andy, good morning. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Andy's working on Mark's team. 
We've got Patricia Zazetti from Metro Detroit. Valerie Connor says, good morning. Hi, Valerie. William Anderson says, hello. Kelly Dillon, good morning to both of you. Howard Dodds, nice to see your name, Howard. Nice to see you again. Roseanne Beck, who is on Mark's team, is joining us. We have Denisha Williams, who says, good morning from North Oakland County, Michigan. Nice to see you. Bill Jarvis is joining us as well. He's with Jarvis Property Restoration. And it looks like they are hiring. So check out Bill Jarvis's post um, for those job seekers who are on the session. So check that out. Um, Juliana Kwasnick. Hey, Juliana, nice to see you. Bill's actually in West Palm, Florida, he says there. Uh, Jenna Hobart with Mark's team. Nice to see you. Uh, she says, great point on prioritizing your needs and resist putting a freeze in on the hiring process. Mm -hmm. So nice to see that. We have Amanda Sabal joining us from Chicago. Um, Ahmed joining us from Somalia, Mark. So we are international oh. this morning. Look at that. Across the world. Uh, let's see who else we have on. Angela says, hola. Uh, Amanda is joining us. Tuhin from Bangladesh. Omer from Pakistan. Um, so uh, we're actually up to 99 views right now. So I think having a little bit of that comments uh, coming helps to, to drive the viewership as well. And then um, also, Mark, on Facebook, we've had a couple of comments coming in. We had a little bit earlier, Catherine Bigenho. Hey, Catherine, joining us. Um, and then Lori Huber as well. So some nice conversations here. And for those of you who are, um, if you just joined us, if you haven't left a comment yet, you can drop a comment below if you have questions for Mark. Um, that you'd like to ask, you know, you can drop those in the comments and I'll periodically pop in. What happens is with StreamYard and any of these streaming servers, there's about a 30 second delay. So if you drop your question or comment in and you say, well, she didn't say my name yet. She hasn't asked my question. It'll take a little bit and I'll, I'll continue to refresh the page there. Um, so I'm going to put a question out to Mark's team. Any questions for Mark? We'll put you guys on the spot and we see if you're still paying attention. <laughs> and he's watching right now, you guys. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta ask a question there. Um, David Messina joining us um, from Royal Oak. So Mark, here's a question. This this question comes from um, Jogendra Naik and he asked the question, how do you think the job market will improve? So what are your, your thoughts there on, you know, what that, I, I mean, it's it's hard to predict. I don't think you have a crystal ball, do you, Mark? I mean, to know what no, the future is looking like right no, now. It, it, it really is anybody's guess as to what's, what's going to happen. One, one thing I would say is that um, you know, based on, on prior and having lived through a couple of these events in my life, yeah. um, and, and I think um, companies reacted to this very quickly and very severely. Yeah. And, and in all likelihood, um, went too far. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know of, of one company, they were, they, were, they were quite public about it. They took the, the, the bottom 10 to 15 percent um, of, of their performers and, and they had different ways of ranking that primarily quantitative, but they immediately reduced that that contingent. So the, okay. the, the bottom 10 to 15 percent of whatever that meant from a metrics point of view for those roles, they were immediately terminated. Wow. Okay. That, that anyone who had been hired in the preceding 60, 90 days was furloughed. Um, and the reason for that was you know, we're in a, they're in a new position, they're in a new role, coming up the learning curve in, in this environment and being productive and adding value is going to be extremely difficult for those people. So they, they simply furloughed them. Mm -hmm. And then they deferred all bonuses until the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, and they, they typically paid out uh, quarterly bonuses. That, you know, that's, a, that's a very severe reaction to this. And you, you were hearing of a number of companies imposing 20% reductions in compensation. Yeah. Coupled with coupled with terminations and and deferrals, some are doing deferrals of compensation. Yeah, that too, deferrals. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you take a twenty percent haircut right now, and then we'll try and make you whole later in the year. These are really uh, very, if you think about it, really severe reactions uh, to this. And companies didn't do it without thinking about it. Obviously, they they were very thoughtful in, about what they were doing. Right. Uh, but if you think about, well, what happens if, if we have that, or when we have a recovery, even if that recovery right. takes us back to 75 percent or 80 percent of where we were. Right. Uh, companies are going to be under resource. Yeah, they there you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to have projects they need to do mm -hmm. um, that, that may initially drive kind of the interim staffing world that we also play in. Right. But ultimately, it will drive needs for permanent hires. Mm -hmm. the, the timing of that, though, is, is really, really difficult to, to predict. Right. Um, although the pressure is building uh, immensely to, to get the country moving again, I mean, it's it, we see it everywhere, and mm -hmm. you know it's it, it's it's something that's 
got to happen, obviously, in a thoughtful, planful way as mm -hmm. well. So let me ask a question too, Mark. This has kind of come um, for those folks who might be watching, who might be thinking about, well, I, I want, you know, maybe I want to hire or I have a need to hire, but, you know, we went from, you know, not a lot of people in the market to now the market's really flooded with so many people. So how do I kind of wade through that pile of, of resumes or applications? I mean, how, how does your team help with that process or, or what advice would you have for folks that are kind of worried about that? Um, the piles of, of applicants that they might have to sort through. Yeah, you know, frankly, we would, uh, you know, it's such a problem to have. I mean, you yeah. know, we'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> you've, yeah. Got, you've got, you've got, you, you, when you've got an excess supply of really good quality candidates, mm -hmm. that's that's really not a problem. That's that's uh, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's certainly what we get paid to do for our clients is to go through that process, um, evaluate. Uh, people who are in our pipeline, people who we've already talked to, people who we know about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we, we typically do post opportunities, as you as you indicated, Brenda, uh, by, by pulling that up. And then we'll go through uh, and pretty laboriously uh, everyone who we think is a potential candidate. Yeah. And then, and then we, you know, then we will we'll go through a typical screening process before they ever get to the, to the client. So the client's really paying us to do that, do that process. But it's, it's certainly something that Many companies do on their own and have the ability to do on their own. Just mm -hmm. a question of do they want to invest in those resources to get it done? Right, because so. you can either you can either do your job, you know, which is what the, the job function or the role that you're doing, or you can spend your time doing activities that are that take you more time that you don't enjoy doing, that take you away from doing the work that you really enjoy doing. And you know, it's kind of the outsource model. Find a specialist who can do that for you, so that you can focus your time and efforts into that process. Um, flip side of this, we actually have had a couple questions. Your team members are, are doing a very good job of asking questions. So um, I'll take a second. They better be careful. They better be careful. No, I'm like, I, I could have said, like, let's throw Mark, Mark for a curveball, you guys, and throw No, I'm not going to do that. But they they were um, listening, and, and a few questions came in. So let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to find, okay, here we go. So Stephanie Rosenbaum asks, um, hey, Stephanie, by the way, I don't know if you heard the, the backstory at the beginning if you joined, um, but if you didn't watch the video in the beginning again, but C Stephanie's asking, are companies gonna be challenged to retain people during this time? What are your thoughts there, Mark? Well, initially, no. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously the people are not going to, going to, going to jump uh, in this environment. Um, yeah. um, very, you know, very, they're just aren't, the opportunities are more limited, let me put it that way. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think retention will not be as, as difficult an, an issue in the short term. The longer term question is really an open one because uh, you can do damage to people when you institute across the board reductions in compensation that are as severe as the ones we're hearing about. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, I, I can recall back in the you know in the uh, uh, post Y2K environment, the, the 2000 period, when when companies would do even much more modest reductions in across the board reductions in compensation, five percent, right. and and people would would be infuriated and mm -hmm. and, and would would surely be out the door. Um, that kind of thing sticks. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I think people are understanding. They get that this is really a different situation. Yeah, companies are trying to they're trying to be creative versus just laying people off they're like well how can we kind of shuffle the, the budget and the funds to keep people on giving them their pay and their benefits but you know also helping the company to survive because in the long run you got to keep the company going otherwise if the doors close there's no money for any paychecks right that's that's right that's mm -hmm. right but you, you do i mean people understand that um and, yeah. and, and, and can get it but uh if, if i'm a performer and i'm doing really well yeah and i and i've, I've had a lot of value Right. And I had a great and I had a great year in 2019. Yeah. And then and then you give me a 20 percent haircut. Yeah, that's and, that's ouch. That hurts a little. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then fire three of my best buddies. And yeah. then, uh, you know, you know, you, you got to be careful with all that. Um, right. You know, what kind of environment are you creating? What 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 are you, what are you saying about your people? Um, yeah. So that, that that can be that can be a difficult thing to navigate. And, and you know, that's what managers get paid to do. You got you've got to go yeah. through that that calculus as to how best to preserve the financial health of the enterprise and then retain these incredibly important assets that you need to, yeah, to, your team. to do your work. So. Yeah, and it's it's really kind of interesting to, to see, you know, this is defining leaders, you know, this pandemic, you know, both in the approach that organizations are taking and the ways that they are communicating with their team, the ways that they're 
treating your their team like human beings and being um, conscientious of the, the challenges of working from home and the stress. I mean, this is a, I'm starting to hear the psychologists now coming out with, you know, reports and things on, you know, this is a, um, this is a substantial event that's happening to all of us. And we are all going to be impacted from this, from a psychological perspective, um, whether we have been directly hit or affected by this, this disease or just the, the whole changing our way of life is really stressful. Um, so, so changing gears into the candidate's perspective, you know, um, Mark, one thing I heard is that one of the interview questions that candidates are going to be asking employers in the future are, you know, how did, you, what, how did you treat your team during the pandemic? You know, what, what did you do differently and how did you ensure the, the health and safety and well-being of your team? You know, that type of a question coming out. Um, have you heard any conversations about that yet? I haven't, but I I'm, I think that's going to be front and center. You know, it, it tells you a lot about an employer yeah. is how they how they deal with this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what what did they do? How quickly did they do it? Uh, how did they ensure when when uh, when we do go back to work? What was their protocol uh, for, right. for dealing with that? How did they think about it? How did they how did they engage employees? Uh, what kind of support did they provide for them uh, to allow them to work from home? Mm -hmm. All of those kinds of questions give a really good indication of flexibility, uh, the, 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 how they value people. Um, yeah. So I, I think that is going to be, uh, be, be front and center. And it's, it, you, you said it very well. It really is a test of leadership mm -hmm. uh, for managers, and it gives you an indication of how they responded. Yeah, um, absolutely. So it yeah. tells, tells well, you a lot about a potential employer. Yeah, it does. I think it'd be very telling. And um, on, on that note, Mark, you know, Lisa just, you know, she gave you a nice kudos. She said, Mark has done a great job keeping our team moving along during these times. So um, so kudos to you, Mark, on doing that and, and Lisa for recognizing and for sharing that. Um, another question from another one of your team members, Mark, Roseanne, um, she's saying, what suggestions would you offer to candidates on how to make their resumes more effective? And, you know, I, I don't know if that's changed because of, you know, kind of the pandemic or if it's just, you know, generally speaking, Mark, you know, what, what thoughts do you have there? So it, it, it's, um, it's an interesting question. When, when we talk to people who are in the market, one of the things we talk about is, is LinkedIn and mm -hmm. the emergence of LinkedIn as a very powerful platform for doing what my team does. And there are lots of reasons for that, that mainly the market drives a, preference for a single provider. So yeah. uh, if, you think, if you think about it, candidates only want to go to one place to find, uh, to post their profile and recruiters really only want to go to one place if they can mm -hmm. to find people. I mean, that's so that that element of convenience really drives a, a, a powerful single provider. And I'm not, I'm not saying they're the only game in town, but Right. They are certainly emerging as a, as a powerful provider. So, so thinking about how LinkedIn works and, mm -hmm. and how, how the data mining process works in the recruiting process is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So you, you really need to think about the role you're looking for. Mm -hmm. What are the attributes associated with that role? What are the key terms associated with those attributes? And to make sure that those are in your profile or in your um, – or on your or on your resume, uh, because recruiters someplace are going to, going to do an automated search, and they're going to be looking for certain key terms. Uh, you know, you could have a CFO that needs to have SEC experience, SAP experience, and international experience, mm -hmm. and somebody's going to key those terms into a field, just like you do in Google. And presto, up will come those profiles that have those words mm -hmm. in, their, in their profile. And mm -hmm. if you don't, even if you've had that experience. You're not going to be in the game. So, so recognizing that this is an automated process to a large degree mm -hmm. uh, and understanding how that works and then structuring your profile on LinkedIn and then your resume to meet that challenge is, is really what it's all about, at least in the early stages of the exercise. Yeah. So, awesome. so we really, really encourage people to think about that strategically. Mm -hmm. This is more art than science, mm -hmm. and it takes continued modification and adjustment to get right. Awesome. Well, that's really great to know. And and I want to give a little shout out to Stephanie, if she's still on the line with that, the Job Seeker group. Stephanie, if you're still running it now, if if others can join that group and if you're, are you moving it to online, drop us a comment in the, in the LinkedIn as well, because I, I admire the work that you guys are doing 
to not only help um, employers and, and recruiters, uh, rather from a recruiting standpoint, but I also really admire the fact that you guys are giving back to the community and you're building these relationships with, with individuals who are kind of at that C-level in career transition. And I think it's a really, um, it's a bright spot, you know, and you you were doing this before, um, before it was necessary, I don't wanna say necessary, but even before, you know, kind of the pandemic hit, this has been something you guys have been doing all along. So I really commend you on that. And Mark, um, we're going to start to kind of move to kind of closing the conversation off here today. Um, but I wanted to give you the opportunity for any kind of final comments, thoughts, shout outs, you know, resources you'd like to to offer kind of in closing here for today. No, I, 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 you, you kind of hinted at, at one of the things that we're seeing. We are definitely seeing an, an increase in activity. So I want people to realize that, uh, that. Mm-hmm. You know, the last week I, we had our, we start every week with a Monday call. And I told the team, you know, the preceding week, so last week, you know, felt like weeks we used to have. You know, we mm-hmm. closed a large deal. Uh, we, we had uh, several um, searches that have been put on hold, uh, come off pause. And so we're actively pursuing those. Uh, it, it felt a lot more like what we experienced certainly in the in the early parts of the first quarter. So we're mm-hmm. seeing a thawing. We're seeing companies start to say, you know, hey, I got to get on with it. Um, yeah. So I, I expect that that will, will continue. Mm-hmm. And, and and so I think that's good news and, and people should be encouraged about it. That doesn't mean it's going to happen when it, it, you know, huge to, to the degree we'd like and as fast right. as we like, but we certainly see it coming. So, uh, so that I think that, as I said, I think that that's good news for 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 all of us and certainly for people looking for roles. Yeah, that's awesome to hear, and I I, I love the point there too. It's it's uh, we we know where we know these things happen in cycles, Mark, right? You know, the economy goes up, the economy goes down, but it, it will come back up. And just like the job market, the the supply and demand are always kind of flip flopping positions. So. Um, what I like about the work that you guys are doing is you're you're t- thinking strategically. You're not just in the here and now. Um, and we're starting to see the market follow suit as well. It's okay. We kind of went from a before you know COVID, and then we all got into this work from home. Okay, everything needs to stop because we need to get our bearings again. Now we've got our bearings, and we know there's going to be a process that we are coming out of, and we have to think about the long term strategies for our business. And and you know, talent recruitment is going to be a large part of that. So. Really enjoyed your thoughts there, Mark. Thank you so much. I'm gonna um, pop up on the screen again, just to remind folks, if you're interested in learning more about the positions that UHY Resource Solutions Group um, has available, or if your organization is looking to hire, you know, check out their their LinkedIn page. And then I'm gonna pop Mark's um, LinkedIn up on the screen here. If you're um, interested in learning more about the work that Mark and, and, and his team do, check out his profile. Um, and Mark, it was really nice to see you in person. I'm sorry we couldn't see each other live in person, but this is the be- that's best thing, right? Video nowadays. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to thank Mark's team for joining as well. Um, I think I saw everybody making some nice comments on there. Let's just give a f- couple final comments and shout outs to folks before we leave here. Um, let's see. I think I saw Susan Deutsch on here as well and Sarah um, and and some questions about the skills I think that we talked about as well. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us online here today. If you're not already, um, make sure that you go to my website, mellermarketing.com slash subscribe, and you can be added to my VIP email list where I share LinkedIn strategy tips as well as schedules for upcoming interviews. And I'll um, be uh, sharing the link for the playback a little bit later on. But if you're watching this um, in playback, still leave a comment below. If you have um, tips for job seekers, if you're hiring right now and you'd like to put a little plug in for the positions that are open, or if you have any questions for Mark, leave those in comments because I'll share those links with Mark a little bit later on. All right, Mark, thank you again for the conversation today. I hope you have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the week. You too, Brenda. Thanks so much. All right, you're welcome. And everybody stay safe and stay healthy. And I look forward to seeing you again in the future on LinkedIn Live. Take care. Thank you.